welcome back. And of course, in the uh, fourth grade of Newcastle District Cricket, uh, Charles Sound has secured a win over the University of Newcastle, uh, 10 to 192 to 0 to 7, while the Hamwicks had a win over Merriweather. Meanwhile, in other games, Stockton and Northern Districts had a 10 to 166 um, to 69 run win over West, while Newcastle City also won, beating Wildtown Mayfield 9 to 262. Meantime, Belmont was forced to call off their match against Toronto due to wet weather, but however, Cardiff, Bull Cardiff Bullaroo managed to secure a victory with a 8 to 278 to 60 to 1 to 42 win over War's End. To the Division 4 of Newcastle District Cricket and um, Beresfield had a win over War's End, 8 to 122 to 10 to 120, while West Lakes, Maryland Fletcher had a 7 to 144 win um, over Warner's Bay. Also, um, Maryland Fletcher also won over Adamstown. So too did Wes, who also won by beating um, Katawa with a 6 to 167 to 8 to 163 win. In round 6 of the third grade of Central Coast, Cricket and the entrants have secured a 9 to 256 win over Lizaro Rimbas, 7 to 116, while Nawa Wyoming managed to beat Terrigal Matcham with a 10 to 203 to 6 to 176. Meanwhile, in other games, uh, the Southern Spirit managed to defeat the Northern Power with 5 to 77 to 9 to 76. Also, on Sunday, King Cumber of Oka defeated Wyong 4 to 216 to 10 to 180. To Central North, to Central North Cricket in the uh, New England Northwest and in the under 13s, George Denton Shield and and Caulfields were too good for Tamworth Gold with a 1 to 91 um, to 10 to 90 victory. Meanwhile, Inverell were too strong for Tamworth Blue while Maitland Maroon defeated Moree with a 1 to 277 to 4 to 56 win while Maitland Gold were also too good for Nowabry 6 to 76 to 10 to 72. Uh, May time in main time in the under 15s, John Kilbourne Shield and um, Maitland has continued their success with a 1 to 69 um, of 8 to 7 to 66 win over Nowabry, while Tamworth has defeated Armadale with a 3 to 125 to 5 107. While Maitland has defeated Gunnada with a 1 to 52 to 9 to 51. And the Coalfields defeated Tamworth 8 to 112 to 7 to 99. While in the under 17's Cold Dent Shield competition, uh, Tamworth Blue, um, uh, suffered a loss to, um, to Maitland Gold. They went down um, 2 to 141, but there was good news for Maitland Maroon. They took down Nami with a 6 to 336 win. Wow. Meanwhile, it was a battle of the, uh, of the two New England Northwest sides as Tamworth Gold managed to secure a two point victory, 6 to 262 over Inverell's 6 to 260, while the Coalfields had the bye.
uh, before we go to a bit of spoil moments and um, uh, and uh, uh, and of course uh, 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 and the uh, uh, the church as well as the um, as was the police are hunting for a family from Samoa following an incident that occurred yesterday up at Cardiff in Lake Macquarie. Also, it's it's been really tough for myself as well. But also a warning that some viewers may find this story disturbing. It's a whole lot struggling for Connor McLeod, who has been having nightmares since last night. I mean, I mean, what, what someone who would be so mad, um, do something very bad like that? Yeah, you know, I was, I was trying to get his country's flag off his car, which I was touching then, and then I backed off after that. Then before he was going to walk home, Connor was then confronted by the man on the throat which was horrible that the man said this to him, if you touch my car again I will punch you. And then I went back. Um, and then I, um, I went back home and I um I told mum and um and then I told dad about it and um yeah and um yeah what an absolute bully he is you know and um and then um I went up to the church and um I told the minister um about what he did to me. It was totally unacceptable. And it certainly is. Connor as well as the church and his worker Kamar hoping that the man gets rested and locked up in jail. Clifford the big red dog and be in news. Uh, now to I... Uh, now to another story, uh, which of course was on last Thursday. And of course, I was up at a Wiggles concert in up at the Newcastle Exhibition Centre. Of course, um, the only thing that uh, that I wanted to do was, of course, share hugs and cuddles with my favourite Wiggly friend, Wags the dog. And of course, uh, but what my worker Kim and myself found out was that bookings for meet and greet with him or any of the characters were not made uh, and a warning um uh, uh, some viewers may find this story upsetting from excitement the first to sadness the next for long time wiggles thank connor meet and greet with me wags the dog couldn't be on that has since devastated him. Who comes after a, a, a booking for a meter? I am. Still said after last Thursday, the one thing that kind of needs is lots of hugs and plenty of cuddles. Oh. Uh, 
the one that grows. Fame that kind of leads us is what's of hugs. Hold me back, you know. Yeah. The one person he's blaming it all on is his worker Kim for not letting him do what he loves. Uh, what I was, uh, what I was actually doing was is that I was going under that is you know you know yeah just trying to get away from Kim and she grabbed me by the legs and pulled me away I'm just, uh, I'm just hoping that next year will be the year that that um, that will officially bring a smile on my face. And he's right. Cutters, hoping that a meet and greet with me will get the hugs and cuddles back. Wags the dog. NBN moves. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Uh, yeah, thanks, Wags, and uh, yeah, thanks, Wags, and I definitely cannot wait to share a lot of hugs and cuddles with you um, next year. Now, um, anyway, to sport, and of course, um, uh, a big blow for the Knights with utility back Simi Sasagi unavailable for much of the first half of the Knights' um, NOL campaign for next year after he underwent surgery of his injured shoulder. Um, Sasagi underwent a full reconstruction on Wednesday after recently injuring his left shoulder during pre-season training. Meanwhile, the 21-year-old Kiwi, a fancy prospect at the club over recent years who came along last season making 14 appearances, will now be forced to embark on a six-month recovery period. Still on the nights, and meanwhile, the club has confirmed that their, that their um, NOLW Premiership winning mentor, Ronald Griffith, as the new coach of the men's Indigenous All-Stars side, replacing Laurie Daly. Um, Griffiths, who grew up in Woodbury, Recently coached Newcastle's and old W side to an inaugural title. Uh, 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 let's go. Uh, uh, let's go back to uh, to your local sports news of NBN News in May of two thousand. Of course, it's when um, the um, uh, the Matthew Johns um, uh, salary cap saga was still continuing. And of course, New South Wales won the State of Origin um, 3-0. And of course, it was to beat Queensland. On or off field, the Johns brothers are never far apart. But with Matthew set to leave after not being offered a contract, it was feared Andrew would walk away as well at the end of the season. It's a separate issue. Uh, you know, we would love to play our careers out together. Unfortunately, you know, that probably mightn't happen now. The champion halfback didn't want to comment on the Knights' handling of the contract issue with his brother, but admits now probably isn't the best time to make decisions on his future. At the moment, if I made a decision, there's a sort of a lot of emotions running around, so I'll just sort of kick back and... With that said, negotiations by his manager continue with the Knights and the final decision will simply be what's best for Andrew. It's going to be a big decision. Probably the next contract's going to be my last one. So uh, I'd like a five-year deal somewhere through a five years. So uh, you know, I'll wait in the government and make decisions. But other players will also be sweating on the outcome. Blues winger Adam McDougall is one of 11 top-grade players coming off contract and his future may well rest on what happens with Andrew. Oh, definitely. You know, it's... Uh... 
I'm, to me personally, I, I'm going to miss playing with Matthew. You know, we're, we're great friends, and uh, you know, he's been an equal, integral part of my career. And not to have Joey there as well, I don't know what would happen to the Knights personally. He's yet to be made an offer by the club. Jim Callanan, NBN News. No contract offer to Matthew and speculation over Andrew's future has left many fans bewildered. He, ought to be, he knew it for him because he's one of the best players. Pretty sad because they've been with the Knights since it started and he's, you know, they've brought it all the way up to where he is to, the team is up today. Thoughts to that effect have flooded into the Knights headquarters over the past two days. I perceive that the majority of the public out there think it's more a financial ability of the club to keep Matthew rather than uh, a salary cap issue. But the issue has also come to a head amongst the players. Matthew addressed the players this morning at a little gathering of the players and um, reaffirmed to the players that he would give 100%, uh, as you'd expect, no less from Matthew. The skipper also spoke to the players about turning their season around after five losses in seven games. It's a very long season and things go up and down for you and uh, this is just one of those tough periods that we need to fight through. The team named to take on the Bulldogs this weekend will depend on Adam McDougall's recovery from State of Origin and Matt Gidley from injury. A number of props have been named to cover for Matt Parsons, who battles a leg injury, and Glenn Grief, who has a broken rib. While it's hoped Ben Kennedy comes through Origin 1 unhurt. If car racing like this occurs up in the Hunter Valley or in Newcastle, it's of course for fun and thankfully nobody gets killed or seriously injured and of course it's for charity and of course it's also becoming part of a lot of races and plus it's part of it's also part of watching out it's all part of watching out for the road and plus it's also part of looking out for someone on the roads. Uh, now it's time for the word uh, from the Chief, Paul Harrigan. It has been a tough week in rugby league for the Newcastle Knights after Matthew Johns wasn't offered a contract by the club and this week's training was interrupted by origin duty for Adam McDougall and Ben Kennedy, who might I add played sensationally. Add on to the back of that are the recent off-field incidents. You can easily understand how hard it will be for the team to clear their minds and perform. But perform they will. The team is unified in itself and Matthew Johns will lead the way. His handling of the situation and his attitude in preparing himself for the weekend's clash has been impeccable. A credit to him and his family. Matthew, along with the rest of the team, will take on the Bulldogs with every ounce of pride and courage that they can muster. They know that they must win. Now on to the players of the week, and of course, State of Origin rules the roost. And what a great match it was, as tough as ever. Arstow and Lockyer smashed by a Rodney Howe shoulder charge. And Talos returned the favour to Howe. Windle Sailor left groggy by his own teammate, Darren Lockyer. And it's still mate against mate. Brian Fletcher giving a friendly pat on the head to Roosters teammate, Adrian Lamb. Now on to round 15's tips, and I think Parramatta at home can beat the Dragons. Sharks over the Panthers. The Raiders to win at Bruce Stadium against their old coach, Tim Sheens. The Knights over the Bulldogs, while Eagles, Storm and the Broncos should win their home games. Well, good luck for your tips. I'll be back next week. Matthew Johns and Coach Ryan. Two men whose futures at the Knights won't go past this season. But they will be vital to Newcastle's hopes against the Bulldogs this weekend. Matthew John's manager says he had fruitful discussions with the New South Wales and Australian Rugby Unions today, while every NRL club worth its salt wants to sign the Knights 5-8. English clubs have already made offers. Andrew Johns is considering the club's latest offer. A decision on his future still seems a long way off. Two tries, State of Origin star Adam McDougall is yet to start his contract negotiations. I've been pretty happy with my form this year. You know, I feel that you know, I've put a good foot forward every week for the club and I always try to do the best for the Knights. Um, I'm hopeful of staying here, but as I said, these things are out of my hand. I can just go out and play good football week in and week out and then leave the rest of the club. Whether he plays at Stadium Australia again on Saturday night depends on how his knee recovers after the State of Origin win.
I've uh, got a grade two medial ligament here in my knee, so it's a bit concerning, but I'm hopeful uh, soon you'll happen tomorrow and he'll give me a positive um, outcome on the injury. In other team news, Matt Gidley, Matt Parsons and Peter Shields are all out. Taman Atahu will play in the centres, Justin Ryder will come onto the wing, David Fairley lines up in the second row and Clinton O'Brien is back at prop. Drag racing can be really dangerous. That includes up in Newcastle and the Hunter. Except for one driver though. His dreams are of course to win. The weather's fantastic. We've had a very good run to this point of the day and we're certainly hoping it's going to follow on from here. The event all but ends on Sunday. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. Jim Richards still leads. It was the last one, and of course, the last one of drag racing, which had cars as well as different types as well. And of course, it was right on in the Hunter Valley. But despite it being dangerous, but also there was a lot of slowdowns. As well as a few dust ups as well. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. If the noises made by the consortium that formerly owned the breakers, who still haven't been paid, and creditors still owed money wasn't enough, today owner David Hall received the biggest call of all to fix things up. Oh, I'm working for people that are unprofessional at the moment and, you know, it really upsets me. If I really airplayed what some of the things have been going on over there, um, you know, I think people would be astounded. Coach Lee Sterry has wanted to speak with Hall and General Manager Morris McAllister about the club's future for some time so he can then begin signing players. But when today's meeting fell through, the coach had about enough. Well, pretty close to it, you know. At the end of the day, um, I've got players that are sort of, you know, very, very nervous. I'm very, very nervous about my future at the club. Already approached by two clubs for his services, Sterry desperately wants to stay in Newcastle. However, if he doesn't get word soon that the club is financially secure, he'll be left with little choice. Treated me with a bit of contempt, and I think, um, you know, I was just fed up with it, to be honest. The club, meanwhile, says it's only waiting for signatures on a deal struck with a new party that'll boost club finances. They also said players will be paid any outstanding payments tomorrow. Jim Callanan, NBN News. It was a marvellous one. Of course, it was Norris from the Hunter who finished in second. Right up in the qualifier for the Olympic Games. This, of course, was his second best result. And of course, Yvette Rodia also. Yvette Rodia is also from the Hunter. And of course, Rodia finished in third. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. St Francis Xavier hit hard early, but the boys in blue from Singleton got back up. They were full of running and looked like getting around the Hamilton High School's heavy defence. But it was St Francis Xavier fullback Michael Pantazis who scored first. A minute later, Joel Rawlins crossed for the first of his double. Mistakes became the order of Singleton's day. They only completed two sets of six in the first half. Hardly the answer to the classy play of the flick-passing Australian schoolboy lock, Anthony Quinn. He scored a try of his own soon after when Singleton's fullback slipped. Just minutes later, Quinn added another. 
St Francis Xavier came out from the break leading 24-0 and continued to pile on the points. Cheeky play from the red-headed centre Rowan Kelly ended in a very sharp try to Alex Peterson. So dominant was Francis Xavier that Anthony Quinn even gave Singleton a lift. But that did more harm than good. The boys from Hamilton won 44-0 and will play the best team from the Western Division next week. The bloke is weak, went from bad to worse. When their rival South Melbourne scored, and as Newcastle tried to fight back, it all failed. And of course, as their rivals led 2-0, it was just frustrating. While in the while in the NBN soccer league, it was just it was huge for um it was just huge for um uh, for Edgeworth who took on Hamilton. And of course, uh, Edgeworth eventually won the game. Conglin McLeod. NBN News. Many would remember America's World Cup win last year. It was a little hard to forget given the celebrations. Now the toast of women's soccer, the flamboyant Americans will play Australia in the final match of the Pacific Cup tournament. Scotland and Brazil have withdrawn from the championship and a revised draw secured Newcastle as the venue of the much-anticipated clash on June 11. In local soccer this weekend, it's round 11 of the NBN League with Toronto tacking on Maitland, while on Sunday, Adamstown play Highfields, Hamilton is at home to Walls End, while Broadmeadow head to Belmont, and two games are at the Coalfields. Round 5 in Newcastle Rugby League has Cessna tacking on Maitland tomorrow, while Sunday, Lakes, the Blues, Central and South Newcastle are all at home. And at Newcastle Rugby Union tomorrow, Hamilton hosts the students, Wanderers do likewise for the Bay, Singleton play Eastern Districts and Merriweather take on the Waratahs. Knights fans are still protesting over the loss of a favourite son, which the club blames on the National Rugby League salary cap. We want Matty to stay, and if he doesn't stay, we won't stay. The NRL wants the salary cap to contain player payments. Long-serving players like Matthew Johns received no special treatment, and he wasn't offered a contract for next year because it won't fit under the Knights' $3.25 million cap. Just this week, the NRL CEO, David Moffat, said it was almost impossible to do anything to change the rules before the next board meeting of the National Rugby League late this month. Too late for Matthew Johns. But the chairman of the Australian Rugby League says the situation should change. I've spoken to David Moffat to request that he brings forward the next NRL board meeting so that the NRL board can consider the issue of changing the rules of the salary cap. Open negotiations on players' contracts begin in June, and Mr Hill now believes the possibility of a special provision for long-serving players is more realistic. If we can get the rules of the NRL changed, that allows us to reconsider our position with Matthew. For a race with so much on the line, Justin Norris looked remarkably calm before the start. But once in the water, it was all or nothing. Alongside Australian champion Matthew Dunn, Norris set the early pace. On his favourite stroke, the 19-year-old powered into the lead after the first leg. But he was quickly brought back to the field, and at one stage, he'd faded to fourth. With only the top two qualifying for Sydney 2000, he wasn't given much of a chance midway through.
And when they turned into the final 100 metres, it was a four-man race and on to Dunn's favourite stroke freestyle. With Justin's parents, Gary and Jenny, cheering from poolside, incredibly, he fought his way back on the last turn to lead. And the final stretch was a neck-and-neck -neck battle between the master and his apprentice. By just 0.27 seconds, but in a time six seconds better than his previous personal best and more than enough to have him in the Olympic team. On a night where Thorpe and Hugel starred, Norris was still a notable favourite. He swims again tonight along with Tarrant Callaghan and Yvette Rodier. From taking on the Bulldogs to tackling the beach, the Knights camp is happy once again. Saturday night's win, only Newcastle's second away from Marathon Stadium this year. Oh, it was. Uh, and the circumstances under which it was uh, procured were, were really good. Injury ripped apart the side in the lead-up, but nothing was more devastating than the news on the eve of the game for young winger Justin Ryder. After hearing of his grandfather's death, Ryder couldn't have played better, scoring two tries in a game he dedicated to his pop. I say thank you because he's been a big part of my life and he's probably been one of my biggest supporters and I guess I was just to say thank you for all the support over the years. Some encouraging signs also today with Robbie O'Davis and Matthew Gidley both running well today. And while Matt Parsons was iced up, he expects to be back this weekend. Jim Callanan, NBN News. As the Knights struggle to hold on to Rugby League's best combination, the offers from opposing clubs keep rolling in. And they're attractive. Two English clubs who haven't been named have offered the siblings $700,000 each per season to play together. Two NRL clubs have also expressed interest in signing both players. Their manager, John Fordham, this afternoon confirmed the approaches, but says neither player is in a hurry to make a decision. Meanwhile, the Knights are acclimatising for their trip to the warmer climes of Townsville, training in tracksuits to prepare for Sunday's clash with the Cowboys. The trip north has been a hoodoo in the past. The Knights winless on each occasion. It's very important we, we play well up there. It's going to be a very tough game in the heat. Once again, there'll be some fresh faces in the Knights lineup. David Fairley says the likes of Ryder, Abraham and Holbrook have more than accounted for themselves. They're playing really well and, and the guys the guys in the side that have been there a while are you know, really uh, you know, proud of you know, how they're uh, going about their job. Blake Doyle, NBN News. Realistically, Norris had little hope of Olympic qualification in the 200 metres butterfly. Australian record holder Scott Goodman already has an Olympic bronze and Scott Miller owns the country's third best time. What's worse, the Newcastle flyer was second last off the blocks. After the first turn, Goodman and Miller began to fight it out for the lead. But by the 150 metre mark, the field began to reel in the old guard. The Stockton teenager continued his charge right to the wall. Qualifying for his second Olympic event with his best time by over one and a half seconds, Norris was gracious in defeat. All my hundreds at the end, it couldn't have been any closer really, but Heath, a great swim by him. A very much new look side met today before leaving for Sydney. It wasn't hard to see who was crowd favourite, with Matthew Johns given plenty of support and encouragement. To the side, and four players had been ruled out since the team was named on Tuesday, the latest being Adam McDougall. He'll be replaced by Daniel Abraham, while Justin Ryder is also in. But it has also given prop Clinton O'Brien his first run-on start this season. Jason Timu joins the bench to play the Bulldogs at Stadium Australia for his first game in the top grade for over 12 months. Ironically, it was the corresponding match last year that ended Timu's season with an Achilles injury.
As for McDougall, he's disappointed to miss tomorrow night's game, but the winger was buoyed by the news. His knee injury isn't as bad as first thought. At first it was a grade two, and now they say it's only just a grade one, so I know that's all medical jargon, but uh, that means that it's probably only five days away from being 100%. The match is on NBN tomorrow night from 9 o'clock. Jim Callanan, NBN News. What to go up New South Wales to win in the state of origin? Scoring a tree, then celebrating. Wags the dog. NBN lose. If you lose someone of the caliber of Andrew Johns, you lost both your halves. And being an outside back, um, it'd be a crucial blow, and it's something I'd have to consider. I don't want to be at a club that's weakened. Singleton managed to overcome their rivals in the Newcastle Rugby Union today. That was all thanks to plenty of tries that were scored by a lot of their players. The win becoming enough for Singleton to win the game. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. With no sponsor, as well as the struggle for contract for players for the Newcastle Wakers. Their management, as well as their coach, are worried that this year could be their last. With a lot of players leaving the club. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. South Dean Mikowski learned the hard way how swinging arms hurt. The 5'8 injuring his arm in the opening minute and played no further part. Aaron Thorne got in the way of a certain West try. But no one could stop Paul Scovgard a few minutes later. That man Thorne turned things back the Lions way with a clever run to the line to lock it up. While Gavin Cook had his hands on things as well, intercepting to give the visitors a six-point buffer once more. From one half back to another, and Daniel Watson laid on the perfect pass for Grant Rogers, and the Newcastle reps scooted over to level it up again. After a good game for the state residents team midweek, Jared O'Doherty continued his good form, making it 18-12 at the break. Some lowlights from high shots featured after half time while Gavin Cook had a swing as well. But Thorne was stinging in attack, his try getting south within reach again. But it was Western Suburbs, the winners, 36-18. Senior Newcastle Breakers players today played down the team meeting held to discuss what options they have should the club fail to pay outstanding money. While there are conflicting reports from those who attended, one thing is clear. They are preparing for the worst case scenario of not being paid at all. If that occurred, players would then be free to sign with other clubs. As for the club itself, no news on negotiations to secure a cash injection via a new partner. On to the Newcastle Knights, and they'll push their case for an NRL board meeting to be held as soon as possible with NRL CEO David Moffat tomorrow when he visits the city. Newcastle wants a scheduled meeting brought forward in time to discuss dispensation for long-serving homegrown players, in particular Matthew Johns. But even if that was granted, it's uncertain Matthew would accept the offer given the high level of interest in other clubs, especially from the Northern Eagles. I've had a few little chats to Matt this week, but I usually speak to Matt once a week, but I've probably spoke to him two or three times this week. Meanwhile, his brother Andrew's future isn't expected to be finalised for some time yet. I sort of said it all weekend before uh, that I want to concentrate on football and get back to, to what I've, I've played in the last couple of years and then I'll make a decision, so probably a couple of weeks down the track. Jim Callanan, NBN News. 
When the Knights failed to offer Matthew Johns a contract, citing the effects of a salary cap, it prompted calls for change so clubs could accommodate for homegrown and life member players. But NRL Chief David Moffat isn't rushing into anything. It would make my job absolutely impossible if, if I've got a set of rules and then every five minutes I'm being asked to vary them from one, for one reason or another. In saying that, the NRL boss conceded the salary cap does have flaws and that's why a board meeting on the 25th of May will debate the issues. Nothing in uh, rugby league is simple. There are anomalies all over the place. And the Knights see plenty with the cap for standalone clubs as opposed to those who've merged. That's been one of our big complaints is that standalone clubs don't have any variation to it and there are, are, there are anomalies and it's not an even playing field. The board um, is aware of this great public debate, specifically up here, but it's one that's been had before by other clubs and you have to weigh up everything that's gone before and is likely to go in the future. While club officials will have their say, so will the players. Knights captain Tony Butterfield is preparing a paper on behalf of the Players Association for the NRL so that they can be included in the decision-making process. He's known for lightning moves with the knockout blow and Adam Watt expects his walk to live up to his talk. I'm going to give him a war. I mean, it's my war title. I've sacrificed, you know, so much of my life for this art and for these war titles. And there's no way he's going to get it without uh, having to go through the war. Out to get his title, freshman Fabrice Bernardin, the European cruiserweight and world number seven. His countryman, Tonkara Bakari, is up against Ben Steele, who will fight for the world super weight title in front of his home crowd at the Newcastle Entertainment Centre. Lay in bed at night and, and, and the mind starts to wander and the butterflies come and the, the burning sensations. Are, so it's a magnitude of emotions, but uh, from the home crowd, it's going to be a great experience. And while there is a language barrier, the message is clear from their opponents. You can't take the bell back to French. The future is still unclear about the Newcastle Breakers. And of course, it's also unclear if there will be another Newcastle team in the National Soccer League as well. If there's another one, Newcastle will officially have a new name. Conklin McLeod, MBN News. <laughs> While the Knights were, of course, doing training, and, of course, Michael Hagen turned up. He'll be the new coach for 2001, while Wild Ryan is leaving at the end of the year. And, of course, the Knights players still had their good training moves today as part of their upcoming clash. Meanwhile, the Knights squad is still unchanged, and, of course, it's Abraham, Ryder, Tahu, Hughes, Beckett, as well as Matthew Johns, while Andrew Johns, of course, is out, replaced by Holbrook at number seven. Meanwhile, Butterfield is number eight, while Badiris, O'Brien, Farleague, Simpson and Peden are also there. Johns is away because of state of origin, but also, meanwhile, Robbie O'Davis has extended his contract until the end of the 2004 season. Conklin McLeod, MBN News. It's been a lot of tough weeks, though. But with the Breakers still without any players, but also not enough money to play for the upcoming season, now they'll have to come up with another name. That, of course, will be Newcastle United. Carl Glenn McLeod, NBN News. On this week's the 
on this week's The Word from the Chief, uh, uh, Paul Harrigan, um, uh, knew a lot about the, um, uh, about Newcastle's win over the Bulldogs, uh, but also, um, the, um, uh, but also New South Wales's win over Queensland, and also Matthew Johns's decision to leave the Knights due to salary cap problems at the club. But also, um, after Warren Ryan's decision to leave the Knights, Michael Hagen will be the club's new coach for 2001. Of course, he knows a lot of players um, about it as well. And of course, the Chief has named plenty of teams to beat their rivals. He's picked the Eels to beat the Panthers, the Warriors to beat the Bulldogs, the Sharks to beat the Raiders, and he's also tipped the Roosters to beat the Dragons, while the Storm to hammer the Broncos, the Tigers to hammer the Northern Eagles, and also the Knights to beat the Cowboys. Training on the field can be really good for the Newcastle Knights, but off the field, um, they're, of course, on their best behaviour. And, of course, so too is Coach Juan Ryan, who, of course, is leaving at the end of the season. So, too, is Tony Butterfield, who, of course, announced that this year's season is his last. And, of course, Matthew Johns is also leaving after his contract with the club was not renewed. And of course, the Knights still have a lot of players away due to origin duties. That includes Andrew Johns, Conklin McLeod, NBN News. Just, Justin Norris is, is one of the Hunters' best swimmers. After being, after being runner up in, uh, in the upcoming, um, in the upcoming qualify, uh, in the upcoming qualify for the Sydney Olympics. He almost made it there, but missed out. Now the best chance for for Mr. Norris is of course to get back into the pool and start again. And of course, um more good news for the hunters. Um um Jordana Webb, she picked up a silver medal. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. A lot of good sense of humour came for the Knights today. As I did a lot of, uh, as I did a lot of swimming strokes right up in the right up in the swimming pool that of course um, and of course one of the players um uh, included Matthew Gidley and of course the knight scored plenty of tries during up the trip to north queensland
But of course, they, the Knights had one of their players forced out because of injury. But thankfully, the Knights had a awards meeting overnight. But the saga over the Matthew Johns controversy continues. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. The Blakers are, are all but struggling with no players, no sponsor, as well as now struggling to find a stadium. And of course, they'll now have to change their name to the Newcastle United Jets for next season. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. They may have sailed the seven seas and piloted some of the most technical equipment on Earth, but now the British Navy Union team is about to face its biggest challenge, Australia's rugby sides. So to prepare, the sailors have left their usual training equipment to the side, favouring some team spirit exercises. We've been here a few days now, and every day we've been doing rugby training, so we just decided to give the lads something different, and as you can hear from the background, we're enjoying it a bit as well. Having already defeated one Australian team in Sydney, the squad will now face Newcastle, boasting several players from the Country Cup winning side, including Julian Morton and David Lubans. But the British side have picked the cream of the crop from their homeland. From the north down to the southwest, down to the southeast. Uh, but we pick uh, Navy squad players for our inter service championship, which is against the Army and the RAF. And then uh, we bring the best uh, 25 players that are available. The biggest challenge is yet to come for the travelling sportsmen. We depart then down towards uh, Shoalhaven uh, and then we prepare for the uh, the first of the uh, the test series, which is against the Royal Australian Navy down at Shoalhaven Park. Peter Scott and Shane Suska started out together and now more than 10 years after they first waded into the sport, they're reaching the pinnacle of their careers as teammates. Selection in the Olympic team caps off years of hard work. Played for the last Olympics and unfortunately missed out and to make it this, this year is uh, really special. And the years of friendship are likely to serve them well when the two other members of the team jump on board and the pressure of being amongst the world's best mounts. It's basically four strong individuals working as a team and that's the way that that's usually the recipe for success and hopefully we'll have that. The two leave local waters and head for Europe tomorrow and three World Cup events. From there it's on to the United States then back to the Gold Coast for Olympic training. That's quite good for us in the fact that we're just starting a new uh, sort of a base season in our training and uh, we're jumping in the deep end really. We're not really uh, on our game just yet, but by the time the tour is over, we will be and it'll give us a good indication of where we're heading for the games. Brooke Webster, NBN News. Another start put Justin Norris in another final, this time in the 200 metres individual medley. After a typically fast lap of butterfly, he lost ground in the backstroke and then picked it up in the third 50. Commentators caught out before by the fast finishing teenager now paid special attention as he closed on race favourite Matt Dunn. After a win in the 400 metres IM and second by one one hundredth of a second in the 200 metres butterfly, there's no doubting the teenage flyer's pedigree, according to his local coach, Shane Arnold. He's Newcastle Stockton, Newcastle Beach, he's pure Newcastle. Norris is the third fastest qualifier in tonight's medley final. He's already taken one and a half seconds off his best time in this event. A top two finish should see him line up in his third individual Olympic event. A feat so far matched only by Susie O'Neill. From our base and the workload he's doing at the Institute, he'll definitely handle it and he'll only improve. He's young, he's his second major, it'll be his second major meet and I can only see medals. Uh, if a win came for Newcastle, it just had to become huge. And of course... They had to defeat their rivals. And it was right up in Vitui's Newcastle Rugby League competition. Conklin McLeod, NBN News.
After much talked about negotiations, the breakers are now owned by True Blue. Just what amount they've paid hasn't been revealed, but former owner David Hall is a major shareholder in the company. But now running the club, former general manager Morris McAllister, who's now the chief executive. And he has a job ahead of him to firstly pay creditors what they're owed, then convince them to stick with the club. They have helped us with interest and we, we need to restore that. And um, I certainly feel that um, we need to do that uh, sooner than later. A priority list is being drawn up with everyone expected to be paid out by July. But convincing coach Lee Sterry the club's future is fine may be just as difficult. The coach attacked club management earlier in the week but has held initial talks with McAllister. And the deal is also structured around repaying the old consortium the $1.3 million they're owed from the original sale to David Hall last year. I will have a, um, a meeting with, the, um, with the, uh, the old consortium and um, an amicable agreement to be reached. Representatives for True Blue will be in Newcastle next week. Jim Callanan, NBN News. Some bulldog pups got a feel of life out in the middle, but in the main event, it was no child's play. West centre Gavin Cook took little time to leave his mark on the match and on Curry captain Steve Crow. Cook given 10 in the sin bin, Curry putting two on the scoreboard through Rick Ryan. But having the extra man doesn't always mean the overlap will work. The big hits kept coming. But Curry made the tackles that counted too. Sean Tyndale grassing Craig Kamali just short of the line. The referee pulled West's up when they did breach Curry's defence. Brett Cullen's try called back. No problems at the other end. Heyman Lowe got a grubber that caught out Scott Bradley and Curry was up 8-0. Another kick, another try. This time, Danny Lenane found himself all alone to touch down for an easy one under the sticks. It was 14-4 at the break after Ryan Dagwell crossed, but Curry went on with it after half-time to win by 12. Heading into the Round 6 clash at Waratah, both the Cheetahs and Lake sat two points behind Curry at the top of the ladder. And the Seagulls struck early when second rower Jamie Lovett found room out wide for centre Tim Stocker to score. Stocker set up the visitor second with a neat chip kick catching out the Tars at the back and Troy Miles eventually finished off. But the Tars stormed home, Steve Storey scoring a double in a 34-18 point win. Lake's Jamie Lovett was sent off late for descent and will front the judiciary tonight along with Waratah's Michael Varnum who's up on gouging charges from a round five clash. Western Suburb Centre Gavin Cook will join them. He was sin-binned after this run-in with Curry Steve Crow and was later sent off for a late tackle. Curry, Cessnock and Waratah lead the way with a three-point buffer on Lakes and Wests with the Northern Blues just outside the top five. And in Group 21 League, Aberdeen beat Musselbrook, Denman down Singleton while Corindai beat the Premier Scone by four. Down 12-4 at half-time, Weston kicked off with all the work to do. Some sloppy ball work didn't help their cause. A Michael Gill intercept led to a Northern try in the same set of six. Max Riddle crossing to extend Northern's lead by 12. Northern continued to find gaps. Hunter Sports High's Clary Moran carving his way through some paper-thin defence. Always a threat, Rutherford's Greg Bird was able to offload to Tane Mulheron, who crossed to make it 20-4. Weston then struck back from a quick play the ball, John Oetha crashing over. Sensing a Western revival, Northern kept up the pressure. Matthew Lantry was the next to score. Lambton High's Todd Mulville sealing the game minutes later. Weston kept its best play for last, though. A consolation try to John O'Ralph, keeping the scoreline respectable. Northern now take on Sydney tonight and Southern tomorrow. The CHS team will be chosen tomorrow afternoon. Blake Doyle, NBN News.
On the eve of his first title defence in two years, Adam Watt couldn't be feeling better. Feel good, feel strong, feel light, feel fast, uh, and we're looking forward to kickboxing again. And just a little fortunate, no doubt, coming in just under the 84.6 kilogram limit. His challenger for the light cruiserweight belt, Fabrice Bernardin, came in at 83.3. The main support bout tomorrow night was also weighed in, with hometown boy Ben Steele just under the 69.5 kg limit, with his French challenger Tonkara Bakari at 67.65. To hockey, and Newcastle under-21's team has enjoyed a first-up win against Orange at the state championship in Tamworth today. Newcastle smacked in seven goals to one to Firmus' favourites at the three-day championship. Round six of Tui's Cup action kicks off tomorrow, including a big clash at Curry between the Bulldogs and Western Suburbs. Sunday has another important clash, with the Cheetahs home to Lakes. In Newcastle Rugby Union, Nelson Bay play the Waratahs, Merriweather is at home to the Wanderers, Eastern Districts take on Uni and Maitland host Hamilton. In NBN Soccer, the Swans and Bears play at home in tomorrow's games, while the hamilton Cessna clash highlights action on Sunday. Both Singleton and Mayweather Carlton uh, scored for points and scored tries in the most recent round of the Newcastle Rugby Union competition. And of course, Singleton scored plenty more. And of course, had to secure the match winner. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. A capacity crowd filled the entertainment centre for the biggest fight of Ben Steele's career and his French challenger, Tonkara Bakari, knocked any nerves right out of him. But once Steele found his feet, he introduced his fists to the Frenchman. Bakari shaken and soon tasted Steele's power once again. Another blow and it was over. The belt heading Steele's way. He'll now defend his title at least once before turning pro sometime next year. The main bout saw World Light Cruiserweight title holder Adam Watt laid on the line against Fabrice Bernardin and the Frenchman got off to a blistering start. Down but far from out, Watt weighed back in, knocking Bernardin down twice in the second round. But an accidental head clash split the champ and in the fourth round the fight was stopped by the doctor. The French camp thought they'd won it, but under the rules, Watt retained his title on a unanimous points decision, and that blow hurt the most. The ninth Hunter Region Sporting Hall of Fame welcomed 10 new inductees into their ranks today. Among those honoured, past legends of league Alf Gibbs and Charlie Gill, while boxer Lynn Truscott was also honoured posthumously. Among those also named, touch footballer Gay Taylor and Peter Coglin for swimming. And the opening round of the National Thundercat titles didn't go past practice laps today at Dixon Park Beach. Conditions too much for competitors and it was called off. Negotiations, the breakers are now owned by Trubert from the original sale to Duck expected to be paid out by July. Pay creditors what they're owed, then convince them to stick with the club. Representatives for True Blue will be in Newcastle next week. Jim Callanan, NBN News. The Blues' state of origin contingent from north of Sydney returned to Newcastle, worse for celebratory wear, but happy. Adam Muir had his first origin match since leaving the Knights and winning a spot at the Northern Eagles. Yeah, it's just great to be back. It's been a couple of years just to come back like that and um, win the series like that. I think it's the highest score against the Queenslanders, so it's fabulous, mate. I couldn't be happier. The Knights' Ben Kennedy's strong defensive game was boosted by the sort of hard running and great ball work vital to David Ferner's game-breaking try. Andrew Johns was on within seven minutes and made an instant impact. His running and passing game found holes all over the paddock.
Adam McDougall starred again and says any controversy over that collision with Julian O'Neill and then the Gordon Tallis try ended with the state of origin judiciary. I always run the ball the same sort of manner and I just think I mistimed the run. So um, as far as the clip goes, well, what comes around goes around. So you just got to live with it. There was a lot of frustration going on at the Knights office today after they were told why Matthew Johns was not offered a new contract for next year. It was all because of salary cap problems. Conkling McLeod, NBN News. State of Origins back with an extraordinary Blues display to wrap up the series in the Maroons' backyard. Once again, the Blues bench with Johns, Muir, Stevens and Ferner was one of the main reasons for the Blues' victory. There were so many good performers. I was particularly impressed by the Knights' trio of Adam McDougall, Joey Johns, at his brilliant best, and I thought Ben Kennedy worked his heart out. But the knockout blow for Queensland was the attacking ability of the Blues with Fittler, Johns, Kamali, Hill and Tuvi, and the second phase play of Muir, Kennedy and Fletcher finishing off the combination. Statistics which surprised me no end show that Queensland, after last night's loss, have only won a single game at Suncorp in the last seven matches. That really breaks down the myth that once surrounded the Lang Park Cauldron. It's widely accepted that the build-up and the bus trip past the Caxton Hotel actually helps condition the New South Wales boys mentally for the upcoming onslaught, and it's really helped build those statistics of winning six out of the last seven games in Queensland. Now to the plays of the week. Adam Muir returned from representative wilderness to Origin Bliss. He took his punishment and handed some straight back to Queensland to Paul Green. Adam McDougall went in knees and all into Julian O'Neill. And just have a look at the facial expression on Julian prior to the impact. You could tell he knew it was going to be a tough tackle. And Adam McDougall also got a swipe for his efforts in trying to stop Gordon Tallis from scoring. Both incidents went unnoticed by match officials. On to round 17's tips, Brisbane, Newcastle, Melbourne, North Queensland, the Roosters, Canberra and Dragons to win their games. So good luck with your tips. Back to you, Mike. Sunday's Min My Cycling Open has given Margaret Hemsley her last hit out before heading overseas with the Australian road racing squad. That's where the state number two rider will gun for a spot on the Olympic team. And the 125 kilometre race on Sunday will be the perfect warm up with top racers lining up. Lake Macquarie teenager Michael Lancey has won the New South Wales Youth Sailor of the Year. The talented sailboarder is one of the top competitors for the Mistral class in the country. And more than 800 Hunter High School students ran around Ritchley Reserve at Blackbutt today for the area cross-country championships. All those who raced vied for selection to compete at the state CHS championship in Sydney in July. And it's round seven in Tui's Cup Rugby League action this weekend. Two games tomorrow with South and Curry to play under lights. On Sunday, Lakes play Maitland, Northern Blues host Cessnock and Central take on Waratah. And in Newcastle Rugby Union, four games tomorrow with the match of the round being the undefeated Wanderers clash with Eastern Districts. The Waratahs, Uni and Nelson Bay are all at home. Two hundred and fifty people had one common sentiment outside Marathon Stadium. I personally reckon they should suck the ball and save our players, especially the local boys. Through tears, Gary Johns told why he believed his son wasn't offered a contract for next year, even though he had been contacted to start negotiations. He says it all stems from Matthew's dispute with Warren Ryan in April. Michael Hill has obviously taken it on board and taken offence to the fact that they've come to him and complained about someone that he selected to bring here as a coach. That, that's what's cost Matthew the job. As protesters finished the rally and marched onto Marathon Stadium, they continued to chant for their hero. The chairman of the Knights, ARL and NRL, denies the decision about Matthew John's future was motivated by anything other than the restrictions of the Knights' salary cap. 
if maybe the people at, uh, at the top of the club volunteered to leave, maybe they'd, they'd both stay. If that's what it takes for you to stand aside, then Matthew Johns can stay. Will that be happening or not? No, not at all. It's considered one of the highest levels of soccer in the state that schoolboys can achieve. Two teams will be chosen from this three-day competition to play in Sydney against the independent and combined Catholic schools in June. And if they prove successful at that level, it's on to the Nationals. But for now, most teams are just concentrating on beating long-time reigning premiers Sydney West. Newcastle lost their first game against North Coast 3-1 this morning, but regained confidence this afternoon against Western, storming home with a 4-0 win. Finals will be held on Thursday. Meanwhile, at Broadmeadow Basketball Stadium, the primary school girls' basketball state championships got underway today. Thirteen teams have travelled from across the state to take part in the event, more than 130 players. Hunter managed to win all three matches today. Finals will be held on Thursday. Adam Harper, NBN News. As the Knights administration continue to suffer the backlash of squeezing Matthew Johns out after this season, the time for other clubs to bite the bullet is almost here. A lot of clubs have to go through some pain, and they're not going through that pain yet because they're all waiting. And we want to see what pain they're going to go through before we have to finally see what the market value is and what's going to happen in the marketplace. Basically, the Knights want to see what other clubs offer players to judge the market price and sign up accordingly. It's a dangerous gamble, according to Adam McDougall, who says he'd sign today if offered the right deal. I'm hopeful in the next couple of weeks we get something finalised because I know that the grass is probably pretty green on the other side um, with some other clubs who are looking for outside backs. The winger frustrated that his contract negotiations have stalled as the club also waits on what its number one buy, Andrew Johns, decides. I know Ian's under a lot of pressure. I know that Andrew Johns has to be secured, but uh, I'd like to think I was a priority too. I'm a little bit disappointed I haven't received an offer. I'd, I'd personally like it to be finalised sooner rather than later. But One night who'll have nothing to do with contract negotiations is Warren Ryan. The coach today again denied claims he was involved in the club's decision on Matthew Johns, let alone those made on any other player. I've only got control over one person. That's myself, leaving. Jim Callanan, NBN News. Where else would you find a couple of Queenslanders but on the veranda talking about origin? It's a big game, but Robbie O'Davis is more worried about his season's prospects. It's a bit crook, the old foot. It hasn't... Um, really stood up to much treatment in the last five, six weeks. So from doctor's orders, they, they do an operate. A bone graft is a simple operation that will fix his foot, but it will stop Robbie O playing again this year. He says he feels right within himself. The only problem is that if he bends the pin holding his foot together, then it's a major operation to fix it, and he's got to get the doctor's permission to play. Really proved to myself that I... Uh... That I'm no good to play, you know. With the um, with the, the doctors putting me out and I'm running around 100, percent I tend to feel uh, I might be sitting back just thinking, could I and couldn't I have not played? Meanwhile, Knights coach Warren Ryan believes the Blues could have benefited from having David Fairley running into the fray tonight. I just don't know what forwards have outplayed him when we've met them, and, and you know his performances in his group outstanding from you know from the very first game and yet there's hardly been a mention made of him as a representative candidate. It's been a public relations disaster and fans were demanding to know why Matthew Johns wasn't offered a contract when the man himself spoke. Johns said he'd agonised but had made his final decision. The Knights blamed the salary cap for not being able to offer Matthew his market worth and fought to have rules changed to have long-serving players made exempt. But the NRL didn't back such a move yesterday. But it wouldn't have mattered anyway. As Matthew left, fans stood and cheered.
Then, furious Johns had been forced out of Newcastle, jeered club management. But face them they did, Chairman Michael Hill arriving from the NRL board meeting to join a general manager and board under fire. For hours they answered questions, but facts remain. The club must cut $1.2 million in player payments in 12 months to make the cap, and Matthew will just be the first to go. Jim Callanan, NBN News. With Pride and Australian Spots on the line, Australia B had plenty to play for and took an early lead. Defence was as good as attack and with hometown girl Reagan Jackson leading the way, the B team looked good and took the lead 16-14 at the first quarter. With world champion hero Sherelle McMahon finding range, the number one team began living up to reputation. But the B-side had some willing to carve out a name for themselves as well. It didn't stop Australia going to the break 29-27 leaders. But the Bs bounce back again in the third term to take the lead once more. And again, Australia came back. Louise Southby and Catherine Cox shooting down the Bees' lead. In the end, though, it was great defence by Captain Liz Ellis that turned the match for good. An interception leading to a goal and two-point lead, Australia winning 59-57. With Lenny Beckett at the final training session today, it confirmed the news Darren Albert wasn't set to play. Specialists advised against the winger playing tomorrow, but he expects to be right for the following match. While the ever-reliable Beckett gets another start, 19-year-old forward Josh Perry gets his first taste of the top grade. Pretty nervous, obviously, but uh, the boys have been helping me out. It's been good. Yeah. Named ahead of players like Paul Rahihi and Jason Timu, the teenager steps up for Glenn Grief and will have a tough first up assignment against a big Warriors pack. Yeah, we had a big training session on Tuesday afternoon and uh, that really helped me out. I was a bit nervous before that, but after the boys had chatted me, I was pretty confident. Meanwhile, enthusiasm should make up for any soreness from Wednesday's State of Origin win for Newcastle's three blue stars. Yeah, you just got that much adrenaline going through you can sort of carry it over for a couple of days, so... I feel I'm, you know, feel we're going for another day, so. After a bruising first round encounter at Ericsson Stadium in their minds, Newcastle have planned a reception of sorts for the Warriors. We talked about slowing their big boys down, and you know, if they get that roll on, they're really hard to stop blokes like Stacey around the rock. So, uh, you know, the, the forwards have sort of really talked about getting up in their face and trying to slow them down. Auckland arrived this afternoon without coach Mark Graham, who was with family in Sydney after the death of his son. Officials couldn't say if he'll make it to Newcastle for the game tomorrow. Netball came at a right time, just in time. And And of course, it was up at the state championships. Mm. It was up in the Newcastle competition. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. The South Sydney Rabbitohs were one of the best known teams in rugby league and there was widespread dismay when they were dropped from the NRL competition. But today showed they still have plenty of supporters. It's all about uh, um, getting the red and green back in the paddock, back in a, um, in a 2001 competition next year. The Rabbitohs Roadshow has been travelling the state since March, raising funds to support the old club. Its court case begins in July. It's more than a game. It's more than rugby league. It's about the passion to wearing the red and green. It's about a team, it's about following. It doesn't matter whether the team wins or loses. To me, it's, it's red and green, red and green forever. 
And there's a huge and high-profile support network. Mike Whitney, Ray Martin, uh, George Piggins is there, the man. Uh, we've also got, um, uh, who's it, Alan, Alan Jones and Andrew Denton. Adam Harper, NBN News. Mark Bajiro in the multicoloured trunks feels most comfortable fighting as a middleweight. But after last night, he should have more confidence in higher divisions. Bajiro faced off against a younger and heavier opponent, but in 12 rounds he proved that super middleweight class wasn't beyond his ability, winning the national title on points. Your winner and new Australian super middleweight champion... In the other title fight, Sydney's Ian McLeod in the yellow trunks beat Brandon Wood to the middleweight crown. The Jeff Fennick protege has also fought Bajiro before, with the match ending in a controversial draw. Now Bajiro has expressed interest in returning to middleweight division for a rematch. Adam Harper, NBN News. Robbie O'Davis has been waiting for a medical clearance on his foot, but the good news hasn't come. Had some um, reports on his uh, that have to be confirmed that he may have to have a bone graft, so that's a big worry. Uh, so we're not quite sure about Robbie as, at this stage. In contrast, Darren Albert is straight back into the top grade to play Auckland this weekend after his foot injury. I was a bit surprised that you know, Warren put me back in first grade. I thought he might have given me a start in reserve grade since the wings that have been there so far have been playing so well. He'll renew a partnership with Matthew Gidley in one of Newcastle's strongest backlines named this season, although Adam McDougall and Andrew John still have to get through State of Origin. The same too for Ben Kennedy, with Josh Perry to be blooded in the top grade with a start from the bench. I want him to come up, see what he's got, show us what he can do in first grade, and, uh, and then we'll know. Meanwhile, the sounds of supporter boycotts of Saturday's match have the night's management stirred but not shaken. I think it can be blown out of proportion, you know, the amount of um, energy that you guys run in the press with the, an issue that tends to um, make it seem maybe bigger than it is. Thursday's information meeting for members about the salary cap issues will come after the NRL board meeting on the same issue. Newcastle isn't holding its breath for a dispensation for homegrown life member players such as Matthew Johns. I'm not, you know, overly confident that we're still in there fighting and uh, that's all we can do at this stage. Just like many boxes these, these days, um, um, this boxer from the Upper Hunter knows exactly what to do. That of course is to go to the gym. As well as being like his influence, Muhammad Ali. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. As far as I can see... That was Gary Johns' thoughts on Knights chairman Michael Hill, the man he blames for his son Matthew leaving the club. If the board of directors or the boon counters or whoever is responsible for the decisions could possibly fit him in the cap, they would have. They'd avoided all. They would have avoided all this. That, that's common sense. The coach laughed off claims he influenced the club's decision on Matthew. I can understand his emotion as a father and, and all that sort of thing, and at the moment he's just desperately springing home acres at everyone, and I think the only ones he's missed is our office staff and the dancing girls. But despite Mr Johns' weekend attack on the club, Ryan doesn't think his relationship with the brothers has soured. Well, I hope not, and I, I was reinforced to Matthew that I've tried very hard on his behalf. I've personally fronted a, a David Moffat about, uh, you know, the problem. However, he is concerned what influence the off-field dramas may have on his team's performance as the run towards the finals gathers momentum. We can smell ourselves closing on this opportunity and if we are distracted in any way, shape or form from what's possible, you know, we're, we're, we're just very, very frail psychologically. Jim Callanan, NBN News. Abraham Albert... Uh, uh, as well as as well as Tahu, Hughes, Becker, and Matthew Johns, and also Andrew Johns's replacement, whole book of course into the seven, while at number eight, um, um Butterfield is in captain, while Badiris is on to the nine, and also O'Brien is in the tenth, 
Fair League is also in, Steve Simpson Returns, or Billy Payton, is also on. Meanwhile, Fletcher has been dropped to reserve grade. It follows the Knights' historic win over the Warriors. You're faster than building youngsters that you know can take a step up and not let you down. In fact, play very well for you. Kyle Glenn McLeod, MBN News. Lee Sterry was to meet the unnamed financier said to be buying the breakers at 1pm today. He says he received a call at 10 to 1 telling him there was an emergency and the meeting would have to be postponed. My gut feeling was that uh, I was being told lies. So I continued on down into the office of uh, the appointment of where I was supposed to be. Um, to which um, this person was there, Morris McAllister was there, and David Hall was there. I'd basically been told outright lies when I walked in that three jaws hit the floor, um, and basically they were caught with their pants down. David Hall is selling the breakers to True Blue, a company in which he has a shareholding. The coach says he has little confidence in any consortium associated with Mr Hall, especially when the club has bills outstanding for this season of about $120,000. If that's right, well, if somebody of substance is coming in and going to finance a place, you can't tell me that in three weeks they can't write out cheques enough to the total of $120,000 for a football club. The club's CEO, Morris McAllister, says the incident was a misunderstanding and that Lee Sterry did not walk in on the financier, but his accountant. They were hoping to tie up all the loose ends of the club's sale before a meeting between the coach and new owner was held. Basically, I just want to plead to the people of Newcastle, to um, certainly the, the public and the business sector, to try and get this club back. We need people that are financially strong enough to get the club back. Simple as that. It's probably the last place you'd expect debate over the Matthew John saga, but member for Newcastle Bryce Gordry has brought it up in state parliament. The treatment that he has had, Mr. Acting Speaker, is a disgrace, and it's something that uh, the Newcastle Knights management must take into account in their dealings with uh, this talented player. Mr. Gordry, a faithful Knights supporter, this afternoon moved a motion deploring the Knights' treatment of Johns. Newcastle bosses aren't amused. I think there's an appropriate place and time for everything, and I really don't think that this was exactly the right and exact uh, time and place to um, raise it. The Knights instead would have preferred Mr. Gordry to lobby for a multi million dollar upgrade of Marathon Stadium. It's not the first time the Knights have made state parliament. Their grand final win rated a mention in 1997. The salary cap is a significant issue. There's no doubt about that. But I think it's a complex issue and people have to really understand the whole process of, of what the salary cap means. While Matthew may not be at the club next year, the Knights hinted today he's definitely part of their future plans. When we have been talking to Matthew Johns, it's not as if we're still isolated from Matthew. He's an integral part of this club. He will remain an integral part of this club. And in the future, he's going to be part of this club. Blake Doyle, NBN News. On a steady rise over the last two years, the Breakers achieved their best finish ever in 2000, despite the administrative woes that prompted Coach Sterry to lash out yesterday. The outburst and sort of emotion shown by Lee, I suppose it shows, you know, how, where he's at at the moment, and which is no man's land. Um, you know, not a good position to be in. For weeks, there has been confusion over just who owns the Breakers. As a result, Captain Shane Price says the whole team is concerned about next season, especially the 10 players coming off contract. At the end of the day, people have got their futures and, and, and families and so forth to look, look after, and well, you got to, that's got to come first. Soccer Australia is still waiting for David Hall to supply details of his involvement with the club. True Blue is the property development company that heads the consortium which is supposed to have finally bought the breakers soon after Coach Sterry hit out yesterday. When contacted today, a spokesman would not comment on former owner David Hall's role in the group. They're saying that it's a, a going to be a new entity or, and then that he's going to have not much you know, control in it. But, um, you know, who, who knows? It's a lottery, isn't it? 
Like many young children, five-year-old Jack Mounter Hughes had an aversion to taking tablets. But on the 5th of December last year, it cost him his life after he choked on a worming tablet given to him by his parents at his East Maitland home. At a coronial inquest today, Dr Sue Alder from the Therapeutic Goods Administration gave evidence about the over-the-counter product used in this instance. She admitted the Convantron package could have been better labelled, but that it was the only adverse reaction of this type that has ever been reported to the Therapeutic Goods Committee. Describing Jack's death as pointless, coroner Michael Morahan says even though the tablet was not unduly large, all the recommendations should be adopted to prevent this tragic incident from occurring again. The family also expressed a similar sentiment through their solicitor. If the recommendations of the coroner are followed fully, then uh, we're hoping that another child won't lose its life through this type of medication again. Recommendations include changing the wording on combatron packages to highlight alternative formulations like creams to treat worms. Also a recommendation to pharmacists to give consumers appropriate counselling about the dangers of medication to children. Helen Kapalos, MBN News. It was a match of the NBN Soccer League that got underway this afternoon. Of course, it was between two of the sides. Of course, only one of them can secure a win. But of course, just like other games, more chaos erupted. But not for long. Conklin McLeod, NBN News. If the top line competitors weren't enough, players had to contend with even tougher conditions in the second round thanks to strong wins. Harry Epstein made the most of it when he had it at his back with some nice approach shots. But after a first round 70, an 80 today has him well back. Once on the greens, Shane Barley knew his way around. He shot three over today. Ewan Porter enjoyed the front nine, but the run home to the clubhouse wasn't as kind, ending the day three over. Aaron Price remains the leader with one round to play. He's one over after dropping three shots today, a good effort considering the conditions. With Olympic positions on the line, Lochinvar's three-day event has brought the best out of some of the country's finest horse flesh and their riders. But pushing things to the limit can have consequences. Louise Baston thrown from her mount and given a ride on another charge, an ambulance. Concussion, a broken wrist and the end of the competition, the result. Competition at the New South Wales Equestrian Centre concludes tomorrow. Fourth on the ladder, and with three wins from as many starts, the Knights are showing signs their eye for winning is back in. In his first top-grade game, 19-year-old Josh Perry played a starring role with a 60-metre bust from a kick return that caught everyone's eye. I don't know what else thinking. I haven't done that since we under 12s. He was a hit in defence as well, but he did have a good role model in Andrew Johns. A plan to attack the Warriors' right-hand defence worked well with Tamana Tahu, the winger, crossed twice in the first half. That's the most by any player this season, and two better than Darren Albert, who should return this weekend. He likes a bit of competition, Albert, you know. He doesn't get that much, so I try to push him. Hooker Danny Badiris was cleared of any injury problems, while prop Matt Parsons has a knee strain, but is expected to play this weekend. Centre Matt Gidley carries a slight shoulder problem, but he could well be lost to the New South Wales team that's named tomorrow. That's not something the coach wants, given the team plays Brisbane this weekend, with the chance of leapfrogging to second on the ladder. Well, this is a real pivotal game, even though we've got our top boys out. This is one that we've got to really apply ourselves to see we can't win this one. Hunter took to the field this morning against the competition favourites and several years running reigning Premier's Sydney West.
But it was Hunter that came on strong in the game, and before the first half was out, they were leading 1-0. Hunter managed to prevent any serious attacks on goal from Sydney and took the game into Sydney's defence several times. But at the full-time whistle, the score was still 1-0. Hunter wasn't so lucky in their next clash against the South Coast, going down 2-0. They missed their semi-final chances, but state selectors still have their eyes on a few of the players. Meanwhile, day two of the Primary Girls Basketball Championship proved successful for Hunter, winning both today's matches. They'll play in tomorrow's semis against South Coast. Not so much luck for Polding, the Northern New South Wales Catholic team, consisting of many Hunter players. They were beaten by Barry this afternoon and won't make the semi-playoffs. Adam Harper, NBN News. Life has certainly stepped up a gear since Justin Norris came to national prominence at the Olympic swim trials. Today he stepped back into his old schoolyard, Merriweather High, to be inducted into the school's sporting hall of fame. It's something I've always looked looked up at um, when I've been at school at, here at Merriweather. It's an honour to get up there and, and I always wanted to do it one day. The Stockton teenager joins a long list of sporting achievers from Merriweather High, including fellow swimmer Donna Proctor, tennis player Rachel McQuillan and netballer Reagan Gilmore. Despite his golden performance at the Olympic trials, Norris is keeping both feet firmly on the ground. To me it just feels like uh, I've just been to an important meet, same as I have been for the last few years, come back, swim well and come back and, and just having a bit of a break. So it, it just really hasn't hit me that the Olympics are coming around. Norris will now head north to Caloundra for a camp with the Olympic swim team, then back to the AIS for the most intense training schedule of his life. Blake Doyle, NBN News. The new interchange rule really does need looking at again by the NRL. Apart from the confusion of counting the 12 replacements during the game, what happens if a coach somehow uses all his replacements before the game is over and another player is seriously injured? There's obviously going to be no one there to replace him. We're right back to where we started before the unlimited interchange. What we are doing is potentially putting the players in a compromising situation and if a player is permanently injured because he is not taken off the field immediately, the NRL is very liable. 19-year-old Josh Perry made a spectacular debut from the bench last Saturday with the Knights. Josh is a local junior who started his career at Valentine Elibana and came through the Knights junior system. For his age, he is a tremendous athlete at 112 kgs, extremely strong in the weight room and has recorded some fantastic times in the speed department. Josh has retained his spot in the top 17 and will get another crack this Sunday against the Brisbane Broncos. And now to the players of the week, and we all know the football show's Golden Falcon Awards. You see plenty of rugby league balls hitting heads, but you don't see too many Falcons that lead to tries. And that's where Brad Clyde steps in. Spectacular weather in Canberra last weekend. There were some good shots during the game, but the best one came from one of the spectators. On to round 18 this weekend. The Earls should be too good for the Bulldogs and the Sharks at home to beat the Cowboys. The Raiders have lost seven away games in a row and I think they can get their first win against the Warriors this weekend. Knights to beat Brisbane. I think the Dragons can get revenge over the Storm and these two games are very hard to separate indeed. The Panthers versus the Tigers. I'm going to go with the Panthers on this one and the Roosters to knock off the Northern Eagles. Well, good luck for your tips. I'll see you next week. Back to you, Rabs. The first thing you notice when you watch Nick Lindahl play tennis is how hard he hits the ball, especially for an 11-year-old. I do some jogging up the hill normally, I do my skipping, I always do my training, like, I try to do it every day. Nick's fitness and strength will be on display in New Zealand from the 1st of July when he competes in the tennis test match against the Kiwis. The boy from Elibana is one of eight players from around the country to be selected. He has a very good court craft and can um, you know, work his players out rather than just try to beat them by blasting off the court. Still in the Hunter and Maitland's tug-of-war team has also been showcasing its muscles, taking out the state and national titles last month. The boys, aged 13 to 18, won their 560 kilogram division at both levels and their coach insists it's not all about brute strength. Footwork, teamwork, using your body weight that you've got, you're all together. 
and hunter gymnasts are in for a treat in the lead up to Sydney 2000. The Chinese Olympic gymnastics team will train here at the Hunter Regional Athletics and Gymnastics Facility in Glendale prior to the September Games. Catherine Turner, NBN News. For some weeks, the off-field dramas at the Newcastle Breakers have threatened to ruin a club that's just enjoyed its best ever season. Last night, it was revealed former owner David Hall had stood down as chairman and won't take any part in the running of the football club, but remains a shareholder of the new owner's True Blue. That was actually thought to have happened some weeks ago. But in any case, Soccer Australia is far from satisfied and has demanded a meeting with Hall and Breakers CEO Morris McAllister for Monday to check documentation on the alleged exchange. Hall is still to pay the old consortium around $1.3 million, creditors around $120,000 and Soccer Australia a $250,000 licence fee. True Blue say they'll pay it all. Coach Lee Sterry has said he would quit if David Hall had anything to do with the club and that he'd question the business sense of anyone who would be involved in ownership of the club with him. No one from True Blue would talk on camera today but did say more details will be released next week while the club celebrates its presentation night tonight. With heads furrowed over the racing guide, the Northern Eagles players spared little thought for their loss last night, instead hoping luck would go their way at the Gosford races. I would back last two winners because they're both pretty short sure favourites, so yeah, I'm not going to take too much claim for that. I think Koss have tipped me a couple of tips, very ordinary so far, but hopefully he'll improve. So. As usual, yeah, pretty bad final, bad tips at the start. No luck there. Players weren't the only ones having trouble picking a winner. Yeah, as good as last night at the moment. <laughs> the team's inconsistency demonstrated again last night. It squandered a two-try lead to give the Roosters the Premiership points. Sharp at a loss to stop the team's roller coaster season. The Eagles now sit on 14 points, equal second last on the NRL competition ladder. There's no magic formula, so we just need to work hard this week at training and, and prepare well and do our best again next Saturday. None more disappointed about the game than Steve Menzies who debuted as captain last night. I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit, you know. Um, too bad I couldn't have got a win. Um, I don't know, no percent that's not too good as captain, but we'll see how we go. Josh Smith, the only injury concern after the game, he suffered a heavy concussion. Kylie Colvin, NBN News. The Northern Blues have quickly earned themselves a reputation as tough defenders known for big hits. But when Mixie Louie got amongst things early, the boys from the Bay showed they offer so much more, with Sam Lloyd eventually finishing off for the first. South struggled to get past halfway, and the Blues 5-8th had a field day with a pinpoint pass and a stepping Aidan McElwain making it 10-0. Pinned inside their own half and forced to almost constantly defend, holes began to show and Mark Jones went straight through one of them. South finally got going north with bench player Trevor Ott bringing on a change of luck and the visitors first try with a bulldozing run. It didn't last long, South finding plenty of space but not enough lines to fill it and Jamie O'Connor picked it up to make it 22-4. Just three tackles after the restart, the boys from the Bay were at it again with another attacking raid on South's line. This time, halfback Jason Manton went over untouched and the match was won at half-time at 28-4. Nonetheless, the Blues added 34 more points after the break. This sees them squeeze into the top five for the first time this season with Premier's West outside after yesterday's loss to Waratah. The Cheetahs sharing top spot with Curry. Winners are grinners, and with the Knights in second spot on the ladder, there is plenty for them to smile about. Chancing his arm today, it was yesterday that halfback Justin Holbrook proved the real hit. I had to, especially when we were in trouble at half time. It wasn't looking good. When Newcastle was down 22-4, to Holbrook sparked the comeback, setting up Daniel Abrahams for the first of his two tries. With Matthew Johns off injured, Holbrook also had a hand in Billy Peden grabbing a double, while a towering kick brought down the match winner. All this after he'd been dropped to the first division bench just weeks before. Six weeks ago I was gone. <laughs> I, was, uh, yeah, I was struggling and uh, wasn't playing well, wasn't enjoying my footy and, and now I've turned things around so, uh, and I'm really enjoying it.
Frustrated is a better way to describe winger Darren Albert, kept out with an ongoing foot injury. The doctor said to me that if um, I broke it again and I broke the pin, then it would probably nearly cost me my career. So, you know, I'm not looking forward to that and I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to push it to try and come back any sooner than what I really have to. Matthew Johns' playing future will be clearer tomorrow when he sees a specialist after tearing a calf muscle yesterday. Meanwhile, Clinton O'Brien will escape suspension for this careless tackle on Brad Myers if he submits an early plea. Brisbane rookie Carl Webb isn't as lucky. He faces up to three weeks on the sideline for a dangerous throw after upending Paul Rahihi. Jim Callanan, NBN News. In any war, there's casualties, and unfortunately, the Knights' Ben Kennedy didn't see out Origin 3. An awkward landing after a big hit on Martin Lang, earning him a stint on the sideline and forcing Warren Ryan into a reshuffle. It didn't do me any good watching the game, seeing him injured and taking off the fur, but the other three are going to play. Fortunately, though, the rest of the Knights had plenty to smile about last night. Adam McDougall was at his rampaging best and managed to keep arch rival Wendell Saylor under control. It's obviously every individual's goal to go out there and get over the top of their opposite number and I thought last night I did that once again so you know all in all it's been a pretty good origin series for me and I can't complain about the way I performed. Andrew Johns was also typically brilliant in defence and attack scoring a second half try after only being on the field for 45 seconds. Matthew Gidley, meanwhile, had a memorable Origin debut, scoring two tries and having two called back. I thought one of them might have been passable, the other one was probably a bit dodgy, but, um, you know, I'm not happy it too. Anyway, I'm not complaining. But while the pressure has eased a little for the Knights Origin stars, it's still on teammate Sean Rudder, who faces the tall task of filling in for Matthew Johns on Sunday. I'm a little bit more excited about this game because I'm not coming off the bench and I'm starting in a pretty important position, so it should be good. Colin Baldwin, NBN News. It's a struggle for the for the breakers. After the club was sold, the um there's a new company, True Blue, the um uh, 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 the club now faces an uncertain future. Mm. To have its name changed to the Newcastle United Jets or to disband. Conglin McLeod, NBN News. Canada had already beaten Australia and China in this tournament and lowly ranked Japan offered little resistance early. Another till Savannah Bertini minutes later had Canada firmly in command. Giving away penalty kicks didn't help Japan's cause. Christine Latham hitting home another. Japan knocked home a consolation goal, but nothing could stop a four-goal whitewash by the Canadians. The famous Acropolis rally in Greece has claimed some big-name drivers after the first day, but Lake Macquarie's Michael Guest is still well in contention in the two-wheel drive, two-litre class. It's known as one of the toughest events on the World Rally circuit, and Guest quickly found out why, with searing 40-degree temperatures adding to tyre woes, which saw him finish third after leg one. It's probably one position down on what I would have liked to have been, but we, we, uh, we had a bad tyre choice for the first three stages today, and that cost us a lot of time. So. And on Lake Macquarie, the start of the annual June long weekend Powerboat Carnival. Juniors race today with three big cups on offer tomorrow for the seniors, including the Ken Waggett Memorial and Alan Hatherall Trophies. Stavis will have the rest from June 2000 after the break. Who are you banking with now, Bob? Newcastle Permanent. No, I know. I mean, your, your company banking. Yeah, yeah, we're with the firm. Didn't know they did business banking. Well, I have done for quite some time now, Dad. Oh, good move. That's mine. <laughs> Thank you. Your business is in good hands with Newcastle Permanent. They're our building society. Because the arrow is 